Hey everybody, welcome to Discard and Draw. I'm Jared, that's my brother Brandon, and today we're going to be reviewing Call to Adventure. This is a brand spanking new game that just came out on Kickstarter. Brand, tell me about this game. I am very excited about this game. And those of you who have been watching us on stream know this, because I've been talking about this for like the last, you know, five or six weeks, whatever, waiting weeks. for it to come out, because it was supposed to be out in November and it got delayed a bunch of times. But this is a great game. We're going to show you what it's all about. Let's open it up and take a look. So this is a setup for a two or three player game, actually. Uh, the game plays up to four people. And uh, with a fourth person, you're going to add an additional card from each of these three decks. And we'll get into what these are in a minute. So to start out, you're going to shuffle these three decks, lay out cards. Four for a two or three player game and five for a four player game. This game actually does also play solo and there's separate rules for that, which I'll touch on, but this is a basic setup for two players. So to start the game, everyone's gonna get one of these player boards here. These are really nice. These uh, were actually a Kickstarter bonus stretch goal because mm. originally it was just gonna be this section here, but then they, they got enough funding to get like a whole player board. I don't know if this is gonna be uh, this is a Kickstarter copy, so I don't know what's, what exactly is going to be the same in the retail version. So if your game is slightly different, that's probably why. Uh, but for this version, uh, you give everyone a player board. Uh, everyone's also going to get one of these cool double-sided white sun and moon tokens. And that's going to go on the space on the board that has no icon next to it. Uh, and then everyone is you're going to shuffle these three decks with the like the tree in different stages of growth on it. You're going to shuffle these up and deal everyone two cards from each deck. Just like this. And what these are is... So in this game, you're building your hero's story. Uh, this is a storytelling game. And these three cards represent um, your origin, your motivation, and your destiny. And so you're going to pick one of each of these cards, uh, each of the three types of cards, and lay them face down on your player board in the indicated spaces. So when you're done picking your three cards, like I said, lay them face down. The other three just get discarded, put back in the box. You don't need these anymore for the rest of the game. These are just for setup at the beginning. Once everyone has selected their cards, you flip over the first two, leave the third one face down, and then everyone gets three of these little red crystal. These are experience points. And one hero card. Now there's two decks here. These are hero and anti-hero cards. And your track that you put your little white token on is going to tell you which of the cards you can actually play. If you get good enough, as it were, you can only play hero cards. If you get bad enough, you can only play anti-hero cards. If you're in the middle, you can play either. So... That's the basic setup for the game. Now you're ready to play. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to flip over the top row of cards. So the player that goes first is the one who most recently finished reading a novel. Done! Come on! You know what? I'm going to finish this anyways. I want to know what happens. But we're... So the goal of this game, as always, is to earn victory points. And there's a couple ways you can, I know, this is <laughs> shocking, but there's a couple ways you can do this, and uh, this is the score pad that comes with the game. Uh, there's a few ways you can earn victory points. First of all, your experience that you start with is actually worth victory points at the end of the game, but you can also use it as currency for certain things in the game. The other way you earn victory points is your track on the side of your board. Wherever you are on the track, it's going to tell you how much victory points you gain or lose at the end of the game. Uh, your cards will also have straight-up victory points on some of them. Uh, the later ones have more than the earlier ones. And then your Destiny card is going to have ways for you to earn bonus victory points at the end of the game based on what cards you've collected in your tableau for your story. So on your turn, you're going to attempt to add a card to your character's story. Now, there are three, four, four kinds of cards in this game. The first deck has only three of those four types of cards and they're the types of cards are traits which look like this uh, they have a title they give you uh, 
conditions that you have to meet in order to get this card. And then there's a couple symbols at the top, which I'll explain later. Those cards you can just automatically take and add to your story. You don't have to do anything. The other type of card that you could potentially add is called the challenge card. Now, these cards are a little bit harder to get. You don't get to just automatically add them to your story. You have to beat a challenge. That's why they're called challenge cards. And in order to do that, you are going to be not rolling dice, but throwing runes. That's what these are here. Double-sided runes. Uh, you're going to throw them just like you're throwing dice, but there's... I mean, they're, they're D2s, so... we. It's a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> and depending on how many successes you get is going to determine whether or not you beat the challenge. Now, each challenge is going to have uh, one or two rune symbols on them. Now, what that means is if you have those rune symbols in your story already... You get to add additional runes to your throw to try and add that to your story. So you always start out with the three basic runes, which are these these white ones. They have a two of them have a slash on one side and nothing on the other. The third one has a slash on one side and this little up down arrow on the other side there. And each slash is a success. And the up down arrow is uh, if you throw that, you get to take a hero or anti hero card. Doesn't count as successes, but no, just gives you a card. As I said, if you have either of the two runes that on the challenge, on the side of the challenge, that you are trying to complete in your story, you can add those to your throw. And these runes, there's again, there's two types of runes of each of these types. Uh, the basic ones have a slash on one side and the symbol on the other. Now the symbol is worth two successes instead of one. The third rune, which you can only add if you have three of those symbols or more in your story, has a it has a rune with the with dots on it to differentiate it from the other two, which again counts as two successes. And the other side has a symbol, which varies depending on the uh, the type of rune. Uh, for example, this one here has a the oh, actually. A, it's, it's this. It's a down arrow. It's, it gives you an anti-hero card when you throw it. It doesn't count as a, as a success at all. In addition to throwing additional runes based on the runes in your story, you can also spend experience points to add dark runes to your throw. Now these are special. These represent you like tapping into the darker forces of the, uh, of the world that the you're dark in. dark side. This is, yeah, this would be like going going Sith in Star Wars. Yes. So, uh, these ones are cool because they have a slash on one side, and they have the moon symbol on the other side. This counts as two successes, just like the other runes. Mm. However, if you throw the moon on your throw, in addition to the two successes, you move one step down on your track here. This represents you moving more towards a darker character. A anti-hero, if you will. And you can spend as many experience points as you want to get dark runes up to the, the three limit. There's a three limit on all the different types of runes. You can The most you can throw for anything is three. The dark runes, however, don't have a weird third rune. They're all identical. They all have one on one side and two on the other. So, so the goal is to throw a number of successes with your runes equal to the number on the side there. So this one, for example, is four, so you need at least four successes to successfully collect this challenge and add it to your story. So when you choose a challenge card, there are two options you have. You can go the top or the bottom route. And sometimes it'll add an extra difficulty to your challenge. Depending on which path you take, you will receive different symbols. Each path will give you one type of rune to add to your story. In addition to the rune, you may receive other rewards, such as story icons, victory points, or an additional hero or anti-hero card. So you've picked your challenge, you've picked the path you're going to take on your challenge, you've got your runes, you're all set to go, and now you throw them. You add up your successes and you find out that you've completed the challenge. Now you get to add this to your character's story depending on which path you've taken, is going to determine what is visible when you add this to your story. This is going to go under the leftmost card 
that does not have three cards under it already. So at the beginning of the game, that's going to be your origin. So depending on which path you take in, for example, if we took the bottom path here, it would get added underneath like this so that this is now visible. These are the rewards you got. So this is what's in your character's story at this point. So that goes on your player board. You now have an additional rune, possibly some story icons. Some of the cards will get you to draw new cards. You get those, get all that. If your origin or your motivation gives you bonus XP for anything you did in the role, you get that. And then you add a new card to the row. Oh, and this brings us to the third type of card, allies. Now this is an interesting one because allies do not sit out there by themselves. Okay, they have to go underneath a challenge. So for example, this one, the Cruel Master. Uh, any ally you add to a challenge is going to increase the difficulty by one. So let's say we add this guy to the Prepare for War challenge card. Now that challenge card is permanently increased by one, so its difficulty rating is now five, making it a lot harder to get. But if you successfully complete this challenge and add it to your story, you get the ally as an additional bonus card. Now they go off to the side, they're not directly added to your storyboard. And they usually give you some kind of bonus. Uh, they're usually worth victory points and will give you a story icon to add to your story. And they will give you a bonus benefit. For example, this one, the Cruel Master, you can sacrifice him to go up on the uh, good-bad track, whatever you want to call it. If you do not sacrifice him, he's going to give you one victory point at the end of the game and an additional villainy story icon. So the person who flipped the ally card over gets to choose which challenge it goes under. And then, after that, they have to overturn another card to add to the row. So once a player has added their third card to their story, so let's say I got that one there, flip the new one, now we are on to Act 2. So Act 2 is going to flip over, and uh-oh, this is, oh, well, look at this. So we've got another ally here, so I would add this to a challenge, let's say we add it here, new card. Now we've got a couple of adversaries out. So the adversary is like a special kind of challenge card. They only have one path, they do not have two paths. And they're a little bit more difficult than the average challenge, but you're going to get some nice rewards, including a lot of victory points for beating them. So once Act 2 starts, the player who started the act, who has three cards, any player with three cards underneath their origin card, basically, can only take cards from Act 2 from then on. Any player that does not, though, can take cards from either act until he has filled up his origin card with three cards. So we've talked about these cards, but we haven't talked about the hero or anti-hero cards yet. These are kind of special. These are basically going to give you bonuses towards completing certain types of challenges. Now, in addition to that, they are going to give you victory points at the end of the game for playing them. Each one is worth one victory point when you play it, and the anti-hero cards are going to have a lot of cards that are going to be, well, let you be mean to your opponents, uh, kind of make completing challenges a little bit harder for them, or give you benefits when they fail. So throughout all of this, you have your origin, motivation, and your destiny card, and your origin and motivation are going to give you special abilities. Uh, that are going to help you throughout the game. For example, uh, I chose the Beggar, which gives me two. It gives you two starting runes that you're going to start with. And uh, whenever I fail a challenge with a uh, either either of the two symbols that I have on the card, I get extra experience. That's the other thing. When you fail a challenge, the card is discarded, but you get an experience point for failing. And your origin cards, some of them will give you bonus experience depending on the type of challenge you fail. Uh, there's other abilities too that they do. The motivation card gives you a special ability. Some of them will give you victory points to start the game with. Uh, there's, I think there's a few that give you additional starting runes. So those are a little bit of everything there. The destiny card again is just 
just has a conditional final scoring at the end of the game. For example, uh, the one I picked gives me a victory point for every agility and constitution rune in my story, and an, a victory point for each uh, anti-hero victory point in the story. Once somebody has added their ninth story card to their character cards, everybody else gets one final turn, and then the game ends. At that point, we do scoring. So everyone's going to flip over their destiny card. And the destiny cards usually have a story icon in addition to the bonus victory points that they add. And then you total up your victory points. You're going to count out any straight victory points on your cards, which are either going to be in this diamond symbol or in a black symbol. Either way, they're worth victory points. It doesn't matter. Add your experience tokens that you have left. Victory points from your hero and anti-hero cards. And your story icons. Now these are like a set collection mechanic. So if you have two of the same story icon in your story, you're going to get two victory points. If you have three of the same kind, you get four. And if you have four, you get eight victory points. Any more than four doesn't give you anything extra. Any less than two doesn't give you anything. And you can collect as many sets as you want within within those conditions. Once you do that, total up all the points. Whoever has the most points wins. The game can also be played by yourself or cooperatively with everyone. In this instance, you're going to remove all of the adversary cards from the decks, choose one randomly, and add the corresponding adversary quest card and the Rise of the Adversary card, as well as the appropriate challenge card underneath the adversary card. In this mode, the last card collected in a player's story will be the adversary card. In the solo game, once you defeat the adversary, you win. In a cooperative game, when one player defeats the adversary, each player may take one final turn. All players win if the adversary is defeated, but the player with the highest destiny is the ultimate winner. All players lose should the adversary acquire the listed number of experience points throughout the course of the game. Should this happen, all players immediately lose the game. So Jared, what do you think of this game? I actually really like this game. Yeah? It was kind of surprise of a surprise. You were telling me about it, and I was like, ah, oh, it kind of seems interesting, you know, <laughs> sort of. I don't, you know, I was kind of like, meh, whatever. Uh, but then we actually got to play it, and it it's kind of, it's once you know what you're doing, it's smooth going through it. Uh, it's not really clunky. This is I think this is one of the few games that actually plays in the time it says on it. Yeah, it says 30, 60 minutes, which is actually legit. Like, I think the first time I played with you guys, I think it took me like 20 minutes to explain the rules, and then I think the actual playtime was about an hour. Yeah, and that was for three players. Yeah. So that's so, not bad. That's not bad. Um, and that was also learning some things as we were playing yes. as well. Yes. So the more and more you play, the less time yeah. it will, it will it take. It definitely goes a lot quicker when you know what you're doing. But it is a smooth game because yeah. everything's explained. There's no real, uh, you know, I don't know what this does or I don't, you know. There's a lot of, I mean, the board itself has a little bit of a player aid on it, yep. which we love here at Discard and Draw. We love player aids. Yep. Everything, it tells you what it does. Uh, the only thing I don't like about the player aid is it doesn't, all these symbols are actually something, like the sword is fighting, the wand Strength. is... Dexterity. See, see, I don't even constitution, know. Constitution, intelligence, wisdom, so, and charisma. It's the we got the, sword. We got the uh, alligator. We got the the down, Jared came up with his own names for the everything. upside down house. <laughs> the the Harry Potter wand. The, um, the eyeball. The, the paraglider. The paraglider. And the Bart Simpson hair. <laughs> Which That's he, what they are. Uh, uh, actually, I would call that the Bart Man hair because he, yeah, he's, he's he purple. The, yeah, yeah he's the Bart Man so. hair. Yep. So. Yeah. So that's what they are, and we're gonna. That's what they're called now. <laughs> but it doesn't say what they are anywhere, which is not um, on the player aid. It does in the book. But, yeah, which but. is a little frustrating. I mean, I don't think it would have been that hard to put them on there. It's not important, but to me, I I would have liked to have just the names on there because I don't know. The more you look at it, the more you would get it. 
At least I would. Because um, I'm like, yeah, give me the, the alligator runes. I, you know, I don't know what the heck they're called. Yeah, you were calling it the greater than symbol. Yeah, the greater than symbol. And, uh, give me the greater than symbol runes. Yeah, give me a sword. You mean and dexterity? A, yeah, the greater than. And a greater than and an upside down house. So, so that's a little goofy. But they're all on there and it tells you, you know, what's worth two points for like the dark runes and you know the special third symbols and yep. the card ones so it, it's it's a halfway decent player aid and the board you the don't need a nice. lot of a player aid in this nope. game because there's not really a lot to no exactly and, and, and actually the the score sheet has the uh the story icon stuff explained yep. right on it too so that's nice yep i, I will say i'm not 100 percent happy with the score sheet because they didn't really break it up very well, uh, in my opinion. I would have done it a it's little bit It's a little goofy when you're adding up points. It is. Add up points. It's because you're like, okay, I count up all the diamond symbols, but there's diamond symbols on the the, the hero and anti-hero here, cards, but there's a here. separate spot for that. Yep. So, and then you got to add these into into that symbol. and it, So it's a little yep. weird. It's a little goofy. I would have done it a little bit differently, but that's being nitpicky. But what do you think about this game? I love this game. I this is this is that's it for discard and draw. Is, he loves it. This is going in my top five games of all time for sure. And I mean, I had to back it because they were. So this is this is how the Kickstarter went for me. They were like, "Here's this game," and I was like, "Oh, that looks like a fun game. I like storytelling games. I'm a sucker for storytelling games. Yep, like role player." Um, Pursuit of Happiness, anything like that where you're telling a story as you're playing, I love. I love that. And so the, seeing this, I was like, oh, this looks like a cool game. Maybe I'll back it. And then they were like, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, we're going to include the first expansion if you back it. And it's going to basically make the game based in the King Killer Chronicles book series. And I'm like, mm-hmm. so, you know, okay. That, shut up and take my money. Well, no, that wasn't the shut up and take my oh, money. Okay. Shut Not up and yet. take my money was where they said the second expansion is going to take place. In the Stormlight Archive series, at that point, I was like, "Here, just now, get, just shut up and take here, my money." Here's, here's my wallet. Go. <laughs> I'm. I, you're, you're, I'm. Here's my bank account number, routing yeah. number. Just take all the money. Take what you want. I'm. Just take it all. I'm backing it. So, <laughs> so, for those of you who are fans of those book series, both exp- like I said, the first one, King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss, uh, which is where Tack is from. That expansion is going to take. It's going to add cards to make it uh, that are relate that are take place in that world, basically that mm. are events from those books, that kind of stuff. Going to add to that second expansion, Stormlight Archives. So it's going to add cards that you can use that are from that world, which is going to be weird because that's part of his shared universe. So I'm wondering if a future expansion Ooh. might have Mistborn or. There you, go. you know, anything like that, you know, Lantris, uh, Warbreaker, stuff like that, because that's all part of the same universe, sort of, so so I'm very excited about those, and uh, I don't know if we'll do, we might do, maybe we'll do another follow-up with the expansions at some point, just to show how yeah. those are, but those have not been released yet, the game is out now, the game is, it should be in stores at this point, I think. Probably. Uh, because he... They said it was going to be it's going to hit stores not long after the Kickstarter backers got mm-hmm. it. By the time this video comes out, it'll probably be available. it'll it'll most likely be in stores. Yeah. Go out and buy it um, if you like any kind of storytelling game. I know on our Instagram there was at least one person that did not like this game, and they are now. I'm not following them anymore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know who you are. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. Some people may not like this game, but this is a phenomenal game. If you like any type of storytelling game at all, anything with throwing, if you like dice chucking, this is kind of the same thing, you're throwing runes. If you like set collection, if you like tableau building, if you like fantasy games, if you like any of the book series we mentioned that are going to be in this game, you're probably going to like this game. You're going to want to go out and get it. That's all there is to say. I mean, this is, this is a great game. I'm... 100% glad that I backed this on Kickstarter. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I, I I can't say enough about this game. I mean, this is this is I'm I'm very satisfied with this game and if this looks like something you'd be interested in, I can almost guarantee you you're not wasting your money. So, 
Nope. Go out and buy it. So that's it for this episode of Discard and Draw. I'm Brandon. This is my brother, Jared, and he's finishing reading The Hobbit, so... And done. Now I can go first. Wait. Did we already play it? We're, we're done. The video's over. Oh. Well, I finished it. So next time we play, I can go first. We're not playing this game ever again. <gasps> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so on your turn, the first thing you're going to do... No, that's I don't like that. I'm sorry. Nope. Let me do that. Let me try that again. And you are either going to just automatically take it if, if... Okay, let me start over. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. So when you choose a challenge card... Yeah. <laughs> So you want to do a challenge card, eh? <laughs> the path that you choose will add a diff an extra difficulty to the number on the, the regular difficulty. <laughs> so when you choose a challenge card... Oh. Cut through puberty again? <laughs> Depending on which option you take, you get different rewards. <laughs> Depending on which path you take, you'll get different... aneurysms. You add up your successes and you find out that you've completed that. <laughs> so the adversaries are simply... Uh, no. <laughs> Once somebody has... Somebody. Somebody. Once somebody has added... Once somebody has added the nine... Once somebody has... This is just... If I'm getting fewer you're... and fewer words out as we go. <laughs> Pretty sure it's going to be once. No, once, I don't like that. Nope.